Hope everybody's doing great today. Uh, if you can hear me, just let me know in the chat before we get started. Awesome. How you doing, Sam? We got here, Robert. Uh, how's everybody doing? All right. <clears throat> so today we're going to begin by taking a look at gold and silver. Uh, and it really didn't make sense to try and put together the market. Hey, Adam. It really didn't make sense to try and put the market together before the NFP, right? Because think about it. Everybody's trying to get their order in before. There's a lot of speculation. Um, and so we have our ultimate time today would have been the NFP. For those who don't know, it's a very high uh, impact news um, on all markets. Uh, especially ones connected to the dollar. So especially gold and silver today, we would have seen that uh, that crazy, uh, that move. So what I saw heading into divergence was simply, you know, prices being held here. So we have a low that was also created here on October 3rd, 5 a.m. Uh, my local time. So also on gold, also on silver. And then we had this zone that was created here. And then we had another zone that was created here. And look how gold already began to break down, right? So it's much better to look at divergence in a way of trying to understand what's happening in the market instead of being so, um, you know, mechanical, like, oh, I see divergence enter. It's, um, it's more of a story that you want to build, right? And we what we see here is that the silver market is being held up and it's being held up by somebody or some group right a pool of men as gan says but it's being held up and we know that because of what god teaches us with divergence so gold is being left to fall while silver is being held up so gan tells us this is a very strong indication that silver is going to lead in a bull market right now Okay, or a bullish trend. So if if we're on um if we're on the one hour basis, so going into the NFP, right? I already had divergence on my mind over here. Then going into the NFP, we created a low here. At the same time, about 6 p.m. Uh, yesterday on Thursday. And also here, which just continued this divergent zone right here. So we already had signs that silver is being held up going into the news. And then as soon as the news came out, we can take a look at a on a smaller time frame here. As soon as the news came out, boom, we closed below. Okay, so let's mark the low fifth at uh, 330, so exactly at the NFP. This low closed below, and this closed above. Now, remember, I, I I always recommend that people wait to get an idea on the hourly, to look at hourly divergence, what we had here previously, setting up through the week, right? And you can already see silver was being, seems to be like it was being accumulated, right? There's a story that's going on here. And then we already have that divergence idea going into the news. And what happened? Once again, we got divergence. <laughs> Gold came down, closed below. That was entry here on silver. And up we went. Is there any questions um, on how I broke down uh, gold and silver today? So who wants to take um oh 
who wants to take a, um, an, you know, get, get an idea of what we'd be looking for right now? Sam, counter divergence. Why counter divergence? Because you missed the divergence that's going right now. Right? That's that's what it, that's what every trader, you know, that's what every trader is thinking. Sorry, just a second. So Robert asked a question. As we have support of other analysis, shorter time frame, would you allow trading on five minute divergence? Um, I, this is specifically for uh, for a divergence. So we're going to go through just uh, just what I would uh, recommend doing just through the eyes of divergence because each course is standalone and that's that's how I teach it so people can trade each market on its own. Uh, but um, in our sessions, we'll definitely uh, talk about this some more. So Sam says no to close positions if you entered. Okay, you're right. Absolutely. Not to reverse. Okay, so I jumped the gun on you, Sam. Sorry. So if you're long, absolutely, we'd be looking to look to manage our positions. How would we look to manage our positions? We just need to judge the next highs. Okay, so we have here one. And here, so this one looks to be more relevant at the moment because gold crossed, sorry, silver crossed while gold didn't. So this would be a first indication if you're long from this divergence here on silver to take profits. Now, if price comes up and passes this final high, okay, because we have a whole range here and we've made some important tops. So if price comes and passes all tops on both assets, we can consider price to go up. But if we've diverged here, meaning gold now has not reached this level and silver has crossed, so what I would do is now wait for an hourly close. I would wait for an hourly close here um, on silver above the divergent high. And then that would signal to me that price is going to reverse because if gold didn't make it yet. But remember, if you've watched previous webinars, you know that I don't like all this space. So if there's this, if there's a divergence on silver, I'll wait for gold <clears throat> to move up a bit, get closer to that divergent high, make sure silver is still diverging. And then when silver comes back within the level, so it converges back with gold, um, then I would expect gold to, to uh, go down. But at the moment, until we get some sort of indication from this high by both assets, I wouldn't consider any, any trend uh, change. Adam, what do you mean H1 or lower? So you can, uh, but based on my experience, it's always better to wait for the hourly um, you because you, you can see what, what divergence requires. Sometimes it requires a lot of time, right? So and I'm sure if you've been watching divergence in the markets, you'll see divergence and then all of a sudden it won't be divergent anymore, right? Because it can just quickly catch up to the high. Like gold can, we don't know, gold in two seconds can come up here and then they're even, right? So we don't know. So what we want to do is let it close, let it hold, let us see that there's actual signs where someone's keeping price down, right? And letting the other asset go. And then, um, and then we can analyze that way. And then again, move down to the M5, M15. As Robert mentioned, if you have other confluences, definitely. But uh, we're just going to focus on divergence here. 
So that's gold. Um, let's move on to the S and P. So it looks like we had a bit of divergence here going into the news as well. We just crossed above that high, but again, you know, this feed off 0 0.01, you're not going to, it's, it's not going to worry you too much. Again, we want to see a story here. So here's the original high. And it's kind of the same, but the reverse on gold. So, wow. so same signs of the market maker in a different market. Very clear signs. We have highs coming up, right? In the case of gold, we had lows coming down. So here the Dow has highs coming up. We diverge once and then finally close above. S&P getting held lower, held lower, finally comes up. This is what I was talking about. I don't like empty space. Come up. Then we evaluate again. This closed below, Dow closed above, and then the Dow starts coming back in, and then, and then they both come down, right? But the for, the entry would be on the close of the Dow above the divergent high on an hourly basis. That would be a valid signal to enter here on the open of the next candle. And again, the same thing we're monitoring now is the next lows in its way. So in this case, both assets have crossed the low. And then we would have the next low here that we need to watch. And unless we get divergence going the other way, we would consider the trend down now. Let's see if we get any indication here on daily. Okay, so we can anticipate if the trend is down already on the on that time frame. So we have a low here. That was made by both assets. And look how far the S&P is from, from that low that they both created. All right, so what I would be looking here longer term is for price to bring the pain a little bit more you know, all these pre-summer longs getting wiped out. And if we could get divergence with the Dow here, meaning the Dow crosses down, the S&P fills the gap here to that, to that low and holds, then we could see price possibly going up from here. That would be a lot more longer term perspective. Uh, Robert asks, so once we enter on Criterion Met on an hourly time frame, then we track it and wait for opposite divergence on that same time frame. Yes, that's a that's a very good way to manage a trade. Right, so we're analyzing the next highs or the next lows in in uh, in its way. Yeah, no problem. All right, so let's move to oil. We were looking at last week. So we, we, we looked at this divergence last week. 
I believe we were over. Yeah, we were over here. So it was on Friday last week. So that was right here. You can go check the recording. Does anybody remember? There was a couple people here that were there last week. Does anybody remember what I said? Should happen to crude. And Brent. So here's a perfect example of divergence on a higher time frame. And look at this huge move we had here. Okay, it hasn't stopped coming down since that divergence, since last Friday. So what are some possible ways to trade this? Going in on a smaller time frame um, and look for divergences. Let's see if we had any this week. So it looks like it didn't appear yet on the lower time frame. Don't see any divergence here, except for today. Okay. So it really looks like oil's back. Anybody see uh, a divergence set up here? A really sneaky one. So we had a high made together here at 1050. And price creeped above. That's why it's sneaky. And here we stayed below and down we went. And now we got to analyze this low here. What's going to what's going to happen here? And I wouldn't be looking for um, oil to head back up until possibly some divergence in the other direction. So it looks like we're getting the same kind of idea from the Dow and the S&P. So we have the next uh, low here. That was a reaction back on that uptrend, August 24th. It looks like uh, Brent's getting there quicker. And so we can keep this on our watch list now. And if uh, Brent closes below, crude fills the gap. And we start coming above, right? That'll send crude higher. happening with gold oh gold made new I mean, new highs i think so very nice any questions anybody want to share anything feel free we got one more group to look at so euro dollar and dollar swiss Important to note that these pairs are negatively correlated, meaning when one moves in one direction, the other will move in the opposite direction. And so to better analyze um, these pair, this group together, just click on dollar Swiss or Euro and you can do Alt I and that should invert the, the chart. And this was actually on our watch list uh, last week as well.
So who wants to take a crack at uh, the forecast for dollar Swiss or Euro dollar? What could happen here? What should we wait for? What are some things to pay attention to? Adam says, fill the gap. Exactly. Fill the gap. All right. So we've got divergence here holding very nice, but Euro can simply just keep screaming lower. As you guys saw with silver and gold, um, I think a couple weeks ago, right? Silver was way far away from gold. So the same thing can happen again. So we don't want to be, you know, um, waiting for price, you know, to... We don't want to anticipate something before it happens. Okay. We don't want to expect a lot of students, you know, use the word. I expect, I expect, I expect, don't expect nothing. Wait till you see it. Robert says gold just launched. There she goes. Ding, 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 ding. Divergence at the NFP. Uh, but like I was saying, we don't want to expect things to happen. Right. Expectations will lead to disappointments. We want to judge based on what's actually happening. And we have divergence here, but we also have this gap. And so we cannot ignore it as much as we may expect price to go up. It can come down first and then go up. So we always want to increase the probabilities in our favor. There's plenty of opportunities. We don't need to chase anything here. So the way I would uh, look at this, just because we have daily divergence, is is just to wait. I wouldn't be trading this pair. There's uh, We got gold. We had oil. Uh, so based off divergence, I would wait for this to happen. Let's see what we got going on at a lower time frame here. So if that's the case, uh, and I, you know, I could see price headed down to fill the gap as a higher probability outcome. I'm not going to expect it and take a position or anything on that expectation. But what I can do is I can look for signs to agree with that speculation and and then fit it into, once again, into my rules. So what we can look for now is divergence down. That would be the highest probability um, situation. At the moment, don't see anything going on here. We're going to have to wait for euro dollar to reach this high, possibly. And which means dollar Swiss is going to have to go to its low. And if, because uh, dollar Swiss is up there um, closer, right? So to that divergent high, possible high for divergence, that I would look for dollar Swiss to come up, euro to fill the gap, and then continuation with what we see. All right, let's go back to gold. I just switch sides. <laughs> okay. So again, here comes gold to fill the gap, just as we discussed. And then I would wait for this high before judging anything. All right. So that's uh, that's about it for today. Unless anybody has any questions, anything they'd like to share before we call it for the week.
Awesome. All right. So I uh, hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. If you ever see anything, uh, you know, that you, you have a question on or, or a doubt, feel free to send an email, reach out to me. Um, you know, I'm pretty responsive and instead of being frustrated, you know, from not understanding, I can, I can guide you step-by-step step and kind of see the same process I see. Yeah, you're welcome guys. So everybody take care, uh, live streams and everything will be back next week. Didn't get a chance to live stream today, but um, we'll be back next week. So take care and God bless.